we have with us uh, Rowena Santos, uh, Brampton's Regional Councillor for Wards 1 and 5. Thank you so much, Councillor, for being with us today. Uh, you just have been honoured as the winner of this year's Municipal World Women of Influence in Local Government Award. How did you receive this news? Um, I am thrilled and excited, but also incredibly humbled because I had no idea that um, members of the city staff submitted a nomination months ago. And so to get the call from Municipal World that um, I had won an award was completely surprising to me. And I feel so grateful and, and really blessed to have been given this honor. Mm -hmm. As uh, the winner of this award, how do you access the current situation of women in Canadian politics? Well, you know, I think um, women have still a long ways to go. We've come so far, and I certainly stand on the shoulders of giants of other women before me who have blazed a trail so that I could also have this opportunity as well. Um, but still, whenever I walk into different meetings, the majority of people who are in the boardroom are men. And it's still a lot more work for us to do. In the city of Brampton, I'm only one of two women who sit on our council. And uh, while we celebrate other women and women in leadership through awards like this, which are so important because when women see other women being successful at leadership tables, it encourages them to also step up and speak up and sit at the table as well. But we still have a long ways to go. That being said, despite me feeling lonely sometimes being the only woman at the table in many of the meetings I sit at, I take a look at all of the support around me, particularly in the city of Brampton and all the women who are doing incredible leadership work throughout our communities. And when you bring us all together, you don't feel alone. And so the experience of feeling lonely at the table as a woman is, is quite common, but together with other women, we understand that feeling. And when we're together, we no longer feel alone and more supported. Uh, besides that that loneliness that you feel sometimes, have you ever uh, felt personally hindered uh, in politics for being a woman? Absolutely. I think some of my most challenging times so far as an elected person, I was first elected in 2018. And the last two years of my previous term were very, very difficult. I was targeted, I was attacked, I was criticized for what I wore, not what I said. I was um, targeted um, in campaigns. And, you know, I take a look at some of my other colleagues on council who made the same decisions, voted the same way, and they didn't necessarily get attacked in the same way that I did. And you know, being an ally of Mayor Brown, Mayor Patrick Brown, um, I'm so fortunate because he is always making space at the table. But when you already stand out as a woman amongst a sea of men, you're already targeted, you're already standing out. And so night and day, like with this new term of council, we are taking on the status quo. We are creating change together as a team in Brampton and long gone are the now the, the naysayers, the, the people who are holding on to the status quo so tightly that they felt the need to target me. And so I think you know what, Teresa, this, that's the other reason why this award is so meaningful. It's because women like me who have gone through that same struggle um, see that it's worth it, that it's worth to persevere. It's always worth it not to give up. And you are creating more opportunities for other women to follow your footsteps. You are also the first Filipino uh, uh, on Brampton City Council and a representative of the diversity that makes up Canada. You think it's easier uh, for an immigrant to make it in the Canadian politics compared to other countries? I think that Canada and Brampton in particular provides that opportunity for um, minorities and, and people like myself who come from immigrant families to succeed. 
I look at the many firsts in the city of Brampton, the many people who are not necessarily just a woman or not necessarily Filipino who have been trailblazers for diversity and representation in our city. And so for Brampton in particular, we are very unique. We embrace it and we support that level of leadership and representation in our community. Canada, same thing. I came from an immigrant family. My, my parents immigrated from the Philippines in the 1970s and uh, into the area of Jane and Finch. They saved enough Enough money worked three four jobs and she saved enough money to buy a little house in Brampton in the 1980s and look at where we are now I would have never imagined of becoming a counselor let alone winning this award with municipal world what do you think in your opinion can be done to ensure that immigrant women are more represented in politics I think uh, number one mentoring and supporting each other Um, and making sure that uh, women who are from immigrant backgrounds see themselves in the work that we're doing. And so whether that's an, an award like this or whether it's a voice at the table, um, at, at the council table, or whether it's the issues and the policies that we actually adjust and change at City Hall, they all have to be welcoming and embracing so that the folks in our community, particularly the women, see that. I've passed a series of motions related to gender-based violence, intimate partner violence, mentoring women at the city of Brampton, employing more women at the city of Brampton. And all of those things add up because it makes women, particularly immigrant women, feel more comfortable, feel safer, and feel more open to engaging with the city. You have also been appointed as chair of the Standing Committee, Municipal Finance, Infrastructure and Transportation by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Uh, what does this position entail? So this position is a first position of its kind. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities is the largest lobbying group to the federal government. We represent over 2,000 and cities and towns across the entire country. And so we are a very strong and powerful voice. Some of the biggest challenges that municipalities face today are related to finance, infrastructure, and transportation. You know, we rely so much on municipalities to deliver those services, but also to keep our property taxes low. And so the intention of being chair of this committee is to lobby to the federal government that the federal government needs to support municipalities more because our communities, our people rely on cities and towns to deliver the growth, to deliver the support, to deliver the healthcare, the education that they need and certainly that they deserve. For Brampton, it's an incredible opportunity. We are faced with so many challenges and pressures respect to population growth, lack of housing, lack of healthcare support, lack of mental health support, so many young people, diversity. And so, Being chair of this committee, sitting there on behalf of Brampton is a really big opportunity for us to increase our lobbying and advocacy efforts so that Brampton can also get its fair share. You recently said that Brampton is missing a cool factor. Uh, what do you mean by this? So what I meant by that was we need our arts and culture sector to thrive. We have so much talent here because of the diversity in our city. So much artistic talent, music, visual arts, dance, film, you know, all of those things we have in Brampton. We haven't been investing enough into arts and culture. And we made historic investments recently in arts and culture in order to create um, entertainment, in order to create that cool factor that all of our young people want to see. Uh, a more broad uh, question. As a counselor, what are your main uh, goals in the short term and in the long term? Thank you very much um, for that uh, incredible question. Branton is facing so many challenges right now with possible, with, with the dissolution of, of Peel region, high growth targets, 
community safety issues that we're facing in our community, lack of housing, the climate crisis, you know, all of these things are top priorities and key pressures in our city. I think one of the biggest priorities right now for our city is making sure that our city is well financed and that we have the support that we need in order to provide the services to our community and certainly community safety is uh, one of those top priorities in Brampton as we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. We know that Brampton is also home of, of many Portuguese uh, people, which I'm here representing. So my final question is, uh, do you have a message for our community? Well, my last name is Portuguese, but I'm Filipino. <laughs> true. <laughs> Santos, Santos right? is a very It's a very common name here. Yes, it's true. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, and uh, I have so many things in my Filipino culture in common with our Portuguese community. And I know deep in my heart and appreciate and very thankful to our Portuguese community for your contribution to the city of Brampton, your community that has literally helped to build our city. And um, I know that it's a population that's been here for a long time. And so I want to say obrigada uh, for all of your contributions. And I'm looking forward to seeing more um, of the community in years to come. Okay, thank you, Councillor, so much for your time. Thank you so much. <laughs>